Nothing happens until you take action. And the moment that you take action, you begin to have attraction. You begin to attract people, places, things, opportunities that will not happen when you stand still. Even with divisions as well and champions, it just feels like we're in this massive transitional period where your favorite characters have slowly been written off the show. Mm -hmm. And now we don't have any kind of foundations. Maybe the best example is like someone like Sean O'Malley, who debuts yeah. on, on the Contender series and then he does, you know, become champion. But actually in the last sort of three or four years, like what long form narratives have we got as sort of like nerdy fans? I actually think it's kind of the other way around. Like I'm really captivated by a lot of the fighters right now. Like Tom Aspinall, how long have we been talking about him? He's finally coming into his own and he might literally be the person to break Stipe's record. I could 100% see that, especially with the way the rest of the division is looking, you know, and, and then you look through the, the rest of it, like Sean O'Malley is no doubt about it, a star. I mean, Strickland, I do think is a potential star. He does have that kind of, I, I do think people do really appreciate that candid nature. So like for me, what it is, is I'm really captivated as a hardcore fan by all of these people, but what's gonna pull in that Connor, like, oh, I just saw a crazy press conference from Connor. I'm going to watch the next UFC event. And I suppose it's also not just who can say funny shit or controversial shit. It's also the people who are able to do it and also walk the walk at the same yeah. time. Say, as well. And do it in an exciting fashion. Yeah, exactly. The he had like the chill plus the knockouts. Yeah. I was going to say, what do you want from your fighter? And the answer is kind of Connor. You want a bit of everything, right? Well, the casuals, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I, like if you're talking about uh, encapsulating the masses, what I want is just a great fight. Like I'm, I'm, I am basic bland celery, Jason. I just want to see a good fight. What is it that can catapult a fighter into that superstardom? Like, to be honest with you, feel like we desperately need. I understand, obviously you're coming from a point of it. I just like to watch good fighting. To be honest with you, I like a good fucking story with fighting yeah, as well. Yeah, story's really important. I like to it be helps. Yeah, yeah. watching all the, or, you know, all the guys like Fedor coming through Pride and stuff like that. They, they built them up like these stars. And also Pride did a really good job of literally platforming those guys at the start of each event and going, this is who you're going to like. You're going to like Vandalay Silver. He's the fucking axe murderer. And you're like, shit, who's the axe murderer? What have I got to find out about this guy to make me go and watch his, his last fights, you know? But during that period of time, he was entirely sellable on the fact that he is an axe murderer yeah. and he's he's knocking people out and and actually arguably as well he was knocking out nobodies yeah he knocked out a lot of guys that yeah. did not belong in there even guys that were somebody's like tamora why the fuck are you throwing him in there with vanderlei silva or sakuraba a third time yeah. like what's funny about that era though is those were all people that really didn't have any of the showmanship like literally with fedor if anything, it was the contrast with the pomp and circumstance that Pride would put on. You've got these massive like pyro going off in the background, these massive screens, and he's just like walking to the cage and you're like, holy shit, that's scary. There's a lot to unpack there, dude, though, because you're yeah. obviously a very new fan when that happens. Yeah, and that now point. you're a very old fan and you've yeah. seen all of it before. I do think there's the novel side of it as well, yeah. where it's like, what the fuck? Where you have this kind of like visceral reaction to watching it for the first time. I do think there is a part of that. Any entertainment industry that's been around for a while, we're now at the point where people have done things before. There have been a style, there's been a style that was entertaining. And, and now if someone has that same style, you've seen it happen already, especially if you've been watching the sport the whole time. But most people these days have to be very unique in either their fighting style or their approach to uh, like, promotion because we have already seen people in almost every style of martial well, that was part of what made the connor run so captivating it was like it blew your mind that these things were happening you know aldo's career you got this loudmouth guy coming out of nowhere and knocks him out in 13 seconds and you're like everything i know about mma it's just kind of shattered. It's been a while since we've seen anything quite like that but you also you do wonder as well when you look at guys like alex Pereira. Generally speaking, I know he hasn't come out of nowhere. You could say 
he has come out of nowhere and now he's won two titles that is fucking unreal in like the nine fights that he's had and it's also the excitement of everyone else seeing that for the first time not seeing randy couture her doing it not seeing conor mcgregor doing it not seeing daniel cormier do it it's the new fans that have seen fucking stone hands come along knock out israel adesanya in the way that he did it and then go up and win a second belt so That's it's like winning stuff yeah that is inc extremely yeah. captivating but you could say we're desensitized to it because you could argue well we've already seen it but we've seen it in arguably a way more exciting bigger spectacle with with conor mcgregor you just talked before that about pride and seeing these guys come out and like this is van Dyke silver the axe murder and stuff like obviously you've also made the point recently that there's not a lot of individuality anymore everyone's got the same shorts that's true but do you think like you get excited for current fighters today the same way you got excited for old fighters and if you yeah. do or don't is that because the promotion is different or is it because you're an older guy now well here's the thing as well i think one of the big things about all of this as well is that we've spent or i've spent 15 10 15 years with particular fighters where you have seen them throughout their entire life so you look at their body of work and then you assess it as a whole whereas currently what we're doing is we're looking at new stars and we're saying okay how are they getting on each and every fight and if you look at vandalay it's just like pride built up him as this megastar by again giving him fights that they probably thought that he was going to win whereas now the sport is so progressed it's such a high level you're never going to go into a fight thinking oh yeah he's absolutely going to win this unless there's a clear skill or height or weight or discrepancy they did curate him as well right yeah. they didn't give him any grapplers when he got to the and UFC, that's a, like... yeah that's that's a really good point now Pereira's had enough time now to be tr training with uh, Tashira to get that ground game up and and to get better as well so now he's developed he's developing as a fighter whilst he's already achieved those things as well so it's just like as a promotion what do you do do you put the star where the star needs to be and and curate his career or do you just put fighters into fights and see where they end up yeah, there's like a purist side of that that you discussed that never really happens. Like Tank Abbott was being given fights. It, we were talking about an Elite XC, but he was also being given that in the UFC. And then you have Brock Lesnar, two on one, gets a, a title shot, you know? And and even, even McGregor as well, Marcus Brimage. When you see Conor McGregor up against Marcus Brimage, the size difference is oh, fucking sure. unreal. I remember a period of time where lots of purists said, oh, Connor hasn't fought anyone. He hasn't fought a wrestler. And the only time that he was really tested and actually gained the purists respect, I guess, is when he beat Chad Mendes. Yeah, but and then, even then he didn't. Yeah, exactly. Because everybody's like, he Short got fucked up. As well. Yeah, exactly. So that, that, that's the question is just like, as a promoter, how do you build new stars in the current modern era when everyone is really good and also lots of fans can see through the fact when someone's getting an easy ride or not. I do think that there is a major, major aspect to this. It's like that person literally could be somebody like O'Malley. It literally could be. You could argue with Sean O'Malley as well that he was that he was curated. He yeah, was well. definitely 100%. Was, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so like how do, what, what do the UFC do to assess we need to curate this guy? Is it a good performance on Dana White's contender series? Is it hype outside of the promotion like conor mcgregor was ha having or what is it what, is, what is it that the ufc looks to and goes this is the guy we're going to curate him at a very basic level the first thing they probably want you to be able to do is finish fights like if you can't finish fights by knockout or submission and they're probably not going to be that interested because like that's the problem though if you were say like like robert whittaker for, for for instance, I don't think the UFC ever looked at Robert Whittaker and said, you're going to be the, this next big no. middleweight star. Maybe for Australia, yes, yeah. regionally, but yeah. maybe but he just was. he just kept going through people and kept winning and yeah. winning. Well, he, was he was the was, guy that beat all the contenders at yeah, middleweight. Yeah, no one exactly. Else he was being put in there against the best and still doing well. But people like Sean O'Malley and stuff, they're getting yeah. big knockouts against guys that aren't the best in the division. So that kind of wrecks that point. I think it, it it's it's one of these weird things, you know, it's like, uh, you know, obviously Alex and I come from a music background. There are some people where you're like, I don't even know what's so good about this particular person. They just have it, quote unquote. It's an intangible thing. 
I think there are things like that with people's charisma. Which is kind of crazy though, that to be a star in a sport, charisma is the key. Anything. Yeah. And also yeah, being you, good. You've got to finish the, fights. Yeah, you've well. got, you got to finish fights and you've got to be at a high level. But you've also got to have charisma you or don't, the it factor. Yeah, you well. don't have to have charisma. Does Alex Pereira have charisma? Yeah, Pereira does have the it factor as well. He doesn't have the showmanship factor. He's but got he a has, gimmick. Yeah, he's, which yeah, is he's good. got a gimmick. Yeah. Again, it goes back to the point of why was Pereira given a shot against Israel Adesanya? And essentially, it's just because of the fact that he has already has wins over. Adesanya He's also the well. two-weight glory world champion. Yeah, he had some. He had the look. He had the credentials, and he didn't need to say anything. Yeah, and he exactly. was knocking people out. I do think, though, like to answer your question, what is it that makes a star? For one, I think it's it is somewhat simple on the UFC's end. It's all right. We've posted a clip on Instagram. We've posted a clip on Twitter. We posted um, a video on YouTube, and we've done nothing, and people are going crazy for this guy. All right, maybe let's give him a, a, an opportunity to build himself up that ladder. I definitely think that's a huge, huge, huge factor of it. Like, Bo Nickel is one of those people that potentially could be that. Like, people have gone crazy for him, and who has he beaten? I, I can remember what the last guy he fought looks like, but I can't remember his name <laughs> because he literally never fought in the UFC before. Yeah. You know, he's, he was a brand And he new... was on the main card of a pay-per-view as well, Yep, which is crazy. Do you think Bo Nickel did that because of his charisma, though? I think Bo actually does talk a lot of shit. He's been calling out Hamzat, which is like, oh my God, if that fight could ever happen. But, and also he's successful in another sport though as well. Like he's coming from another place with a big fan base already. And again, that's something the UFC, okay, we can, we'll now take that But I think ourselves. the thing about Bo Nickel is that he's incredibly dominant and finishes people in sort of an effortless against fashion. Against who though? It doesn't matter against you. I'm just saying. That's, I think, what, that's, I, it, that's, that's it, the yeah. reason I think he well, is No, it is a good trifecta so mm. far. You know, we've got somebody that that has charisma is willing to talk trash and call out the big guys at the top like he's wanting to fight Hamzat now I don't know if that's true but he's saying he is but he's got that he's got the knockout power he's got the finishing ability on the ground as well so you're double fucked when you fight him and then you've also got this legit credentialed background so it's like it's not an isolation that he's fucking people up it's not an isolation that he talks it's also that he has all this like set of accolades behind him that really drives that hype. Yeah, and the UFC have promoted him as that. Like this guy is like the best wrestler ever. He's incredible. He like, looks like the real deal yeah. every time you see him. Exactly. It you backs it up. And, and, and like you were saying, you actually don't need to do too much if you're the UFC. Yeah. You're like, well, he's already doing it for himself. Let's just give him the spot. Let's yeah. give him a guy. It doesn't really matter who the guy is and let's see how he gets on. Well, this is the painful discussion as well. When we talk about, you know, like, especially in the sport, this becomes a discussion about marketing a lot. Like, oh, the UFC doesn't do enough to market, you know, so-and-so. What the fuck do you want them to do? It was like when DJ was on top and nobody was reacting to him. They gave him his own ultimate fighter reality show yeah. to <laughs> crown him in this tournament of champions. You know, yeah. like nobody gave a shit. Nobody gave a shit. The only time people have started caring is ironically now when he's willing to talk. He's willing to say things. He's he's even gone on to like the MMA hour and said, I, like, I wish I would have talked this way a little bit more in my UFC career. He would have made a fuck ton more money. And if he would have taken that TJ Dillashaw fight, I'm sorry, that would have been the best fight possible. He was beating a bunch of guys who you didn't know who they were. Ray Borg is not the guy. He's just not. And it's also people rising above as well. You could... I'll absolutely argue that for Strickland. Let's be honest, for a very, very long time, even how many fights, five, six fights into Sean Strickland's career, I don't think anyone knew who he was. Oh, no. He reminds me more of a, like a, a Bisbee, who's mm. just been there constantly. And finally, it was his turn. It was his turn to rise above, have the perfect night, the perfect fight against one of the best fighters ever, basically. You know, and Michael Bisbee, I would argue, didn't have that against Luke Rockhold. He had it against Anderson Silva at UFC London. That was his pinnacle, and I feel like that was Sean's pinnacle. And you do have these moments, these these blips in the fight game where someone comes along and all the stars align, and they get it. They get, they get to the point, whether that's a title or not. You have 299. Stop spending it on vapes, you wankers. I don't vape. So it's, really I'd like spend it. my two. What can you spend two ninety nine on? Tom? I spent. Well, I I am a member of this channel, and I do spend my two ninety nine to go back and relive these conversations yes. in their pure, unadulterated, uncut format.
So if you guys also want to do that, you can join me and Alex. Are you a member? You should be a member. Are you a member? No, I just yeah. use our account. Oh, for God's sake. Yeah. <laughs>